Hello there, everybody. Welcome back to the channel today. I've got for you one of my most anticipated tier lists to do. I've been wanting to do this for a long time, and this is going to be my rankings of every single Pokemon game from best to worst, all the mainline games plus Colosseum and XD. I did grow up with those, and they are close enough. Make sure you let me know how you would rank all of these games as well as what you thought of my rankings. Nostalgia plays a heavy part in Pokemon, so here we go. Let's get into the list. Oh yeah, and before we start, make sure you like and subscribe. Liking helps out a lot. Subscribing is a great way to keep up with the rest of my content, and Pokemon content is something I want to bring more to this channel. So if you subscribe, I will do so. We're going to go from oldest to newest. So we're going to start with Pokemon Blue and Red, and if you were in Japan, Pokemon Red and Green. I do have nostalgia for Pokemon Blue and Red, even though these were not the first Pokemon games I ever played. They were actually my third Pokemon games I ever played. And I am somebody who loves to give credit to the originals. I, this is the thing that started it all. There are so many flaws and, and warts in the original Pokemon games, especially when you compare them to what came later and perfected the formula. Obviously, the incredibly overpowered nature of the psychic type in this is something that people talk about a lot, but Kanto's always been one of my favorite regions. I'm not a Kanto purist, but I do love Kanto, love the anime, love these games, and so I have to put the original Pokemon in A tier. But Pokemon Yellow is definitely a step up from Pokemon Blue and Red, and I would put it in A tier as well. The nostalgia of getting to play basically as Ash Ketchum in this game was amazing. I loved having all three starters on the roster, and I also loved that Pokemon Yellow is quite different from Pokemon Red and Blue, but with these enhanced editions, usually it's the same game, but much better. With Yellow, it's almost a completely different playing experience. Next up, we have Pokemon Gold and Silver, I love these games as well. The Johto region is one of my favorites, and I do love that this game basically offers two games in one. Love the legendaries. Tyranitar, one of my favorite pseudo legendaries as well. I'm going to put gold and silver in A tier right behind Pokemon Yellow, but Pokemon Crystal is the definitive way to play Johto, and arguably one of the definitive ways to play Kanto. Crystal improved on almost everything in Gold and Silver, adding the Battle Tower, which particularly I enjoyed. Suicune's also always been one of the best legendary Pokemon, especially one of the best of the legendary trios that we get, so having a game that focused a bit more on Suicune was always very cool to me. This was the second Pokemon game I ever played, so I have a lot of nostalgia for it as well. You're gonna hear me say that a lot because now we're going with my first Pokemon game ever, Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire, and let's just drop that in A tier right now. <laughs> Honestly, Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire would be S tier for me because these, is, these are the ones I've played most. I've sunk so many hours into Ruby and Sapphire, and when I think of Pokemon, a lot of my nostalgia bone for Pokemon goes back to Ruby and Sapphire. But the reason I'm putting them in A is because Emerald is so much better. It takes everything I love about Ruby and Sapphire, which are the starter Pokemon, some of my favorites of all time, some of the greatest legendaries in any Pokemon game, some relatively strong difficulty, honestly one of my favorite sets of new Pokemon in a new regional Pokedex, and it just cranks it all up to 11. You introduce the Battle Frontier, which is one of the best features ever in any Pokemon game. The blended and probably best version of the narrative from Ruby and Sapphire where you have to fight Team Magma and Team Aqua. I also just love the little changes like the introduction of the encounter animations for Pokemon. Just added a bit more life to the sprites as well. Ruby and Sapphire are incredible and I absolutely love them but if we're going to separate them in tiers Emerald is far better so I'm going to put them at the top of A and Emerald in S. And I do have a lot of nostalgia like I said for Generation 3 and that remains with Pokemon Leaf Green and Fire Red. Even though I did play both Blue and Red and Yellow before I ever played Leaf Green and Fire Red, before they came out, this is still my favorite and definitive way to play Kanto. Seeing all the Kanto Pokemon in the Generation 3 sprites was amazing, and getting to explore that world in the Game Boy Advance graphics was just mind-blowing to me back in the day. So this might be one of my more controversial picks, but because Kanto is one of my favorite regions, because Leaf Green and Fire Red are my favorite way to play Kanto, I'm going to put it in S tier as well. So then we move on to Pokemon Colosseum, which I think was my fifth Pokemon game I ever played. Colosseum being one of my first console video games ever that I played, though 
made it a hugely memorable experience. Playing Pokemon with 3D graphics was mind-blowing back in the day, but this also has such a unique story. The Shadow Pokemon idea is something that has come back in Pokemon Go, but really has never come back in any other way. I also do really enjoy the story here. It's goofy in a lot of ways, but also darker than normal Pokemon stories in other ways. The environments and the towns, everything just feels so, like edgy Pokemon, but in a way that still really worked for me. I also love the design of the trainers in this. There's some really funny ones, as well as the main character just has always looked so cool to me. I'm not going to put Pokemon Coliseum in A tier, but it's going to be in B tier. I do really like this game. And then getting into Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness, which does improve on Coliseum in almost every way from a gameplay standpoint. However, I'm still a bigger fan of the original Coliseum story, played through that one more times, and I just enjoyed the origins of the concept there. I love XD though, I still really enjoyed that game, thought it was great, I'm putting it in B. So that takes us to Pokemon Diamond and Pearl, two games I am also very nostalgic for. This was the first foray for Pokemon on the DS, and I loved every second of it. There were some things that even back then did kind of annoy me. HMs were always annoying, but then the introduction of a new traversal HM like Rock Climb, I never really loved. Obviously, everybody talks about the lack of fire types. If you don't start with Chimchar, you're forced to use Ponyta. <laughs> Otherwise, you're out of luck with fire types. But I'm a huge fan of the starter Pokemon in this one. I do like the story. Big fan of the legendaries as well. I do recognize the flaws in it, though. It is flawed. I gotta put it in my A tier, at least, though. But then, of course, like Emerald to Ruby and Sapphire, although I think Ruby and Sapphire are better games than Diamond and Pearl, Platinum is a massive improvement over Diamond and Pearl. Platinum takes everything that was great about Diamond and Pearl and fixes all of the inconvenient stuff. Traversing is faster through the world. The story is more layered and interesting. There's also a focus on Giratina, obviously, which is one of the coolest Pokemon that you get in the post-game. Just everything about... Platinum is better from the story to the characters to the gameplay to the Pokedex. Everything about it is a huge step up, plus the return of the Battle Frontier. This is just by far the most polished version of Sinnoh, which is one of my favorite regions as well. I've got to put this in S tier, and I'm going to put it right behind Emerald. Next up, we have Heart Gold and Soul Silver, one of the ones that make me actually want to make this list because I've been playing Heart Gold again. I love these games. By far the definitive way to play Johto and I would put this in S tier as well, right behind Platinum, for a couple reasons. These games are fantastic, and it makes everything about Johto better. You also got the Pokemon following you around, which is a great feature that I've always loved. But it does keep some of the flaws from the original Johto, like the grinding that you have to do to level up to fight the Elite Four and Gym Leaders, and especially to fight Red. Which, in a way, I also still do love, because Pokemon games nowadays are extremely easy, and so this does provide quite a bit of challenge. I love that Heart Gold and Soul Silver brought in so many things from the first four regions of Pokemon, including the ability to capture so many of the legendaries. So while I don't think these games are quite as polished as Emerald and Platinum, I think it's better than Fire Red and Leaf Green. I do really love this game and replaying it recently absolutely reminded me how much I did. So it's going in S tier. Next up is Pokemon Black and White. And you've heard me talk about a lot in this tier list. Nostalgia. Well, Black and White was actually the first generation I didn't play the year it came out. And because of that, I don't really have much nostalgia for Gen 5. There are some amazing things about this game, though, and that's why it's going in my A tier. Again, justification for this as well, I'm going to put it right ahead of Diamond and Pearl, considering Diamond and Pearl's flaws. Even if Diamond and Pearl are games that I have gone back to more, first you have a fantastic story with great characters and a great world design for the region of Unova. Starting with a brand new Pokedex without any Pokemon from the previous generations was an incredibly bold move, and one I think pays off, especially post Black and White 2, which obviously are better in every way, and if we're going to talk about those, I would put those in S tier as well, right ahead of Heart Gold and Soul Silver. When we talk about the three most polished Pokemon games of all time, it has to be Emerald, Platinum, and then Black and White 2. And when we look at the few sequels that are truly out there for Pokemon, Black and White 2 does what a true sequel should do for Pokemon. A continuing story with new perspectives from the original. You also have updates 
like the Pokemon World Tournament, which was an incredibly cool addition. The expanded Pokedex allowed you to play with some of your favorites from the past, while hidden grottos also allowed you to explore and find so many unique things in the world. When we're talking about both games as well, I love the animated sprites, the fact that they're constantly moving. It's a very cool touch, one that frankly shouldn't have taken this long to get. But talking about both games, they're both fantastic. I've got to put black and white in A, considering the justification I've used for Ruby and Sapphire and Diamond and Pearl, and then Black and White 2 goes in S because of how big of an improvement it is over its predecessor. Then we jump to Pokemon X and Y, the first 3DS Pokemon games, and ones that frankly have always been a bit disappointing. Now there are things that I do love about X and Y, and X and Y for me was my return to the Pokemon franchise after taking a bit of time off not playing Unova when it came out. Kalos is an interesting region. I think one that will get better, obviously, in this new Pokemon Legends A to Z game. But these are some of the most forgettable games of the franchise. The rivals are the weakest of the series as well. It does have some really cool new Pokemon and Pokemon that I have remembered and loved in later games when they have been available in other regions. But the graphical update isn't as big of a jump as I had hoped it would be. It also doesn't look that great nowadays when you go back to it. And it did really simplify the Pokemon formula, making it really easy and a lot more targeted at children than the franchise had been in the past. I loved Pokemon since I was a kid, and you can play Pokemon as a kid in an elevated sense with all those original games. But dumbing it down just felt like it alienated a bit of the older audience and really made sure that we knew it was catered specifically towards children. I do love the introductions of Mega Evolutions. It's been one of my favorite new gimmicks of the last few generations. It's just simple enough to add some spice to the gameplay, but it also isn't so obstructive that you have to learn a completely new battle system. But Pokemon X and Y were just games I've only played once each, and I haven't gone back to this region. It is probably my least favorite of all of them. I'm going to put it in C. Then we have Pokemon Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. As I said earlier, Gen 3 was my first generation of Pokemon. Have heavy nostalgia for this generation, and I did love these remakes. There's a bit of Hoenn that is missing to me with the 2D sprites. I prefer that style to the 3D. But I love what Mega Evolutions did for this game. It gave it some new layers, especially for a region that I've played to death, really. I love the new versions of Legendaries in this, and I love the traversal system with Latios and Latias. In my opinion, this is the definitive Generation 6 game. It's still not my favorite way to play Hoenn. In fact, it's probably my least favorite way to play Hoenn but I would put it in A tier right above gold and silver and blue and red. So we move on to generation seven with Pokemon Sun and Moon. Sun and Moon, I was extremely excited for a new change to the formula, really going out there and trying something different. And in that way, I really admire what they went for with Sun and Moon. One of my favorite parts of Sun and Moon is the art design. I think it's fantastic. It's a really pretty looking game. The battles look awesome when you go up against each other. I think it looks better than really anything we've seen from Sword and Shield or Scarlet and Violet today. And the world design and the art direction is much more refined than it was in X and Y. This seems like a huge step up, honestly, almost like a completely different console. But to be honest, this game to me is really boring. The story is okay and it is very story heavy. I think for me, Pokemon games have always worked best when story's been kind of less of a focus it especially makes it more replayable and for me as somebody who does play these games a lot the replayability factor is something that's big for me when i'm judging my tier list the first 10 hours or so of this game are a complete snooze fest <laughs> and really going back to it uh, every time it's a really frustrating experience but i do admire what they went for there are some cool new features and new dynamics here but i've got to put this one in c tier honestly but we move on then to ultra sun and ultra moon which are steps up from the original game and they do add another layer of story when the pokemon company announced ultra sun and ultra moon i think we we're all hoping for black and white too something that was really a true follow-up an evolution of the format and the formula but this is more like platinum or emerald but even less refined and less of a step up than those definitive versions this is still the best way to play alola and the best generation 7 game for sure but i'm still gonna put it in b just behind the more nostalgia games for me these are good games because alola is a solid region Again, it just still has the same problem. It's an intrusive story, one that has a hard time getting going. Next up is the Let's Go games, which were the first 
Pokemon games on the Switch. I really enjoyed Let's Go, probably because I'm a Kanto guy. It's one of my favorite regions, and I enjoyed seeing Kanto in Switch graphics, and this is one of the better looking Switch Pokemon games. Shiny hunting is a lot of fun, and I do like the way you traversed Kanto in this version of the game. The best version by far of Pokemon following you around, getting to like hold on to your Snorlax or fly around on Charizard is something that never really gets old. So let's go Pikachu and Eevee are gonna go in the bottom of my B tier. Good games, but not ones I ever really see myself replaying. So that brings us to Sword and Shield, which are some of the most divisive games in the franchise. Some people herald these games as some of the best in the entire franchise. Some people say they're one of the worst in the franchise. As with most things, Things that are divisive I'm kind of right in the middle I'm a big fan of Gigantamaxing I like Mega Evolutions a little better but I do like Gigantamaxing and Dynamaxing I think it's a cool new feature also do love the addition of raid battles as a fan of Pokemon Go I do like that raids have come over into these games and and brought the community really together the wild areas were really cool and led to what I think they did improve on in Scarlet and Violet even if that game has a lot less <laughs> polish but at the same time there are quite disappointing things about Sword and Shield, especially when you compare it to Colosseum and XD. The the size of the world, the, the design, the art design of those worlds, yes, they're very different and kind of dated in their own way, but Sword and Shield doesn't go for anything that's wholly new. It seems like just an evolution of Kalos or Alola's graphics, but onto the Switch. I do like the return to the gym battles. As I said, I, I like the trials, but these are better, in my opinion. Gym battles will always be better in the Pokemon format. And I also did enjoy the story, even if it is a bit linear. Plus, the lack of post-game content in, in favor of paid DLC doesn't necessarily sit that right because of how much post-game content you usually get with Pokemon games in the past. However, I've come to accept that's just kind of a sign of the times, but it still is a bit disappointing. I did replay Generation 8 about a year ago, and I had more fun with it the second time I played through it than I did the first. And in a lot of ways, I think this is a big step up for the Pokemon franchise, but even comparing it to Coliseum and XD, there are things that I wish they would have brought over from those games in terms of world design, or at least battle style, and really modernized them for the Switch and made them the, the template for what they do here with future Pokemon 3D games. I'm going to put Sword and Shield at the top of B. Next up, I'm going with the consensus weakest Pokemon mainline game, and that is Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. With how much nostalgia I have for Sinnoh, with how much I like Platinum, and pretty much everybody likes Platinum, you would have thought these would have been better games, but they just are basically the same game as Diamond and Pearl. The faithful art style just being a bit more 3D is a nice idea, but I think in a lot of ways we want to experience these games in a fresh environment. And this basically just gave us things we've already seen and I could go back and play on my DS. Where Leaf Green, Fire Red, Heart Gold, Soul Silver, Omega Ruby, Alpha Sapphire, they took the original games, gave them the art style of the time. I would have loved to see a Sword and Shield style planted into the Sinnoh world. It would have added a completely new way to play that region. There were some cool new additions like the Grand Underground. The Grand Underground was a huge highlight for this and one that makes this game interesting and at least playable. But for the most part, this is the most forgettable Pokemon game, really the one out of all the remakes that you can absolutely skip. But the Pokemon Company completely rebounded with Pokemon Legends Arceus. Legends Arceus was a completely new way to play the Pokemon formula, and I absolutely loved what they did here. The emphasis on catching instead of battling was a cool new addition to the format. The traversal was awesome, even if it was a bit more limited than we were hoping, and when you're comparing this to Breath of the Wild. The Hisuian variants are some of my favorites, as well as the new evolutions. As a change of pace, I absolutely love this game. It's one of my favorite new additions to the Pokemon franchise, and one of my favorite Pokemon things that's come out in a long long time i'm going to put it in a tier right behind black and white so finally we have pokemon scarlet and violet the latest games in the mainline pokemon series and generation 9 brings a lot of awesome things to the table scarlet and violet were the pokemon games we've been waiting for a completely new way to play and a great marriage of what legends rcs ideas were with what sword and shield started obviously the elephant in the room is that these games really look bad <laughs> the embarrassing pop-ins the disappearing ground the buggy battles where pokemon will just walk in in the middle or you can't turn the camera in the right way scarlet and violet are some of the least polished games i have ever played so then why do pokemon fans defend scarlet and violet so much really it comes down to the fact that these are the games we've been waiting for 
in theory. The format, the style, the way this game is set up, it's almost everything we want. And the promise is so high for what we have here in Generation 9 that Generation 10 should be one of the greatest Pokemon games of all time. Scarlet and Violet is the start of something special, and I can see that end game here, and I truly do think that the next games will be amazing, but I do have to dock it because every time I get a good way into Scarlet and Violet where I'm having a lot of fun or enjoying the world, there will be some crazy glitch that just completely sucks you out of the game. And that's why Scarlet and Violet is so hard to rank. From the gameplay standpoint, it improves almost everything in Pokemon. It is one of the best gameplay Pokemon games ever. But from a technical standpoint, this game is absolutely disastrous. I'm going to have to split the middle and go top of B. The quality of the gameplay and the improvements on the Pokemon formula should make it A. But the technical issues here absolutely are D or C, maybe even F. So I'm splitting the middle. It's going B. So that is my list. Thank you so much for watching this video. Again, make sure you like the video. It helps me out a lot. Subscribe to the channel for more tier lists like this. Let me know in the comments which tier lists you'd like to see next. Are there any other video game franchises you'd like to see me rank? Or maybe you want some more Pokemon tier lists. Let me know. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you next time.